I've, I grew up watching the Jetsons, you know, and I always thought it was kind of cool, you know, they get on a little conveyor belt and they go through and all of a sudden their hair's done, their teeth are brushed, and you know, that's not necessarily what, uh, what robotics is uh, for us, but it is fascinating to think of the potential. And you have lots of uh, manufacturers out there that want to implement robots into their manufacturing processes. We've done all the way from wood industry to medical device to aerospace, um, mainly assembly, uh, pick and place. So the robot manufacturers, they don't want to implement their robots into processes and we have manufacturers that want it. So we're that piece that comes in the middle to where we can take the robot. We integrate it into a robotic cell. We do all the in-feed, the out-feed, the end-of-arm tooling, um, the programming, all that, and we integrate it into one complete package. I like to see us keep manufacturing uh, stateside, if you will, and I think in order to do that, we have to become really good at what we do, and being really good at what we do, we got to automate it, and we got to automate it well. We want to, we want to be a part of the onshoring. We want to bring manufacturing back, and I, I, 100% believe that we can. The U.S. has lost a lot of its manufacturing base, and we lost it overseas. And the only way that we're going to get that back is through automation. We have to automate our our labor costs are way too high here for us to be able to compete. And the only way to do that is through automation. There's so many dynamic problems that uh, happen downstream that manufacturing doesn't really get a say in. It's decided upstream and then you end up ripping out a lot of equipment, spending a lot of money remaking parts where a robot doesn't necessarily have to follow all those same rules. Um, you can program it to look at the barcode in a different spot or, you know, if you need just a little bit of a twist here or a little bit of twist there, rather than just, well, I go from X here to Y there, well, what if you need it rotated upside down and backwards tomorrow? It's, it's flexible. We can train it to do different things, teach it to do different things, and, uh, and different paths, and being able to solve problems in an easier, more efficient way. So you can do hard fixed automation, which is expensive, and when we, you're done, when your product changes, and you no longer need that process, it's gone. You're gonna take that hard fixed automation, maybe you're gonna scavenge some parts off of it, but you're gonna throw it away. With a robotic cell, you're gonna buy a robot into a process, and when your product changes or your process changes, you have a, you have a uh, capital piece of equipment that you can take and you can repurpose into your next, your next process line. With a few little 3D printed parts, we can literally, you know, mock up or test out a, you know, a difficult piece of somebody's process and show them that it can work. Seeing that technology and bridging that communication gap, people are actually seeing it before they have to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to see it. And the other thing is that we want manufacturers to feel enabled in their processes so that they don't have to worry about the process of how they make the part, they can focus more on the part that they're making, right? So, and we think that, uh, we think industrial robotics does that. We can do that.